Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Tales, Outer Tales, Space, Tales, Space, Tales, Space, where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would just like to thank the following tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Data Magnet and Bob the Dragon. Thank you again. And now, on to the story. Story number 1. Playing God, written by Nickel 5. I had grown attached to humans, and now their army beneath me was about to die. From the ground the battle looked even. But from what I saw from far above the carnage was that they were being outflanked. Really, no way that they could have known about the Therisians' cloaking technology. This was the first time the Therasi had used it in battle. I had been here for the humans since the beginning. I saw the first animals crawl out of the ocean. I saw the first ape who preferred to stand upright. Then taming fire, the birth of civilization, Sputnik, reach beyond, and Circe's fall being colonized. Each milestone I made sure to see, and the final one was their extinction. This was just one battle, but if the planet fell, humanity would likely not recover. The Sari weaponry was based on a dangerous balancing of unstable isotopes to fire tungsten rods. They were the first species I have seen use this as their primary firearm. Humans had experimented with something similar with railguns, but the Thessari made them handhold, nuclear, and mass-produced them. This planet was rich in tungsten and uranium. If the Thessari controlled it, their reserves of these resources would more than double. I could try and help, but I won't. My ancient race had long since plateaued. For billions of years, I have traveled and looked at life. During that time, what I have learned is not to interfere. Not all species can live, and I am one being. If I stop a plague, a new one will appear in the next generation. It was prolonged, not saving when I interfered. I loved humans, but I couldn't show favoritism. It wasn't the way of the universe. I looked closer at the line, at a particular spot of interest near the left flank. The machine gun jam to the marines' eyes grew in horror, knowing they only had seconds before the onslaught arrived. The line fired their hand weapons desperately as the Thessari poured over no man's land, bullets riddling Thessari leading the charge. The barbed wire was crawled over, the dead eventually making a bridge for the living. The makeshift fortifications were met, the machine gun was unjammed, the gun was being loaded. The sorry tungsten poured into the marines, a quick death. The trench was overrun. The humans could not compete with the sorry in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Behind the lines, fresh marines were already moving up to push back. The artillery would focus soon on the spot and halt the sorry. Humans would hold, probably even take back the trench. But it's another pound on the nail in the coffin. The cloaked the sorry moved closer. My heart sank. The marines would die unless they fell back soon. The planet was doomed when the cloakers entered the forest. It was just these lives I wanted to save. Maybe I could speak to the commander and get him to fall back, or to the men directly. Yes, over the radio and let them know the cloaked troops. I wanted you, but I knew I couldn't. The last time I had interfered, I grew too attached. The cloakers were almost through the forest. My eyes swelled, tears about to pour out from them. Over the airways, an order came to immediately take cover. Close your eyes and cover your ears. I listened as well. My eyesight was never the same after Los Alamos. The vibrations of conventional explosives rocked my senses. Just one explosion. Then, for the first time on the battlefield, silence. I opened my eyes to behold what they had done. The forest was gone, the cloakers with it. An artificial caldera at its place. The front opened up again and gunfire. The Cesari was shocked and didn't react for another five seconds. That's all the humans needed. 
They pushed forwards. The Saurians tried to hold, but within three minutes, their front line was either dead or falling back. I saw the transport ship spire up in the distance. The day was won. I flew back to the human space and listened to the human commanders. They did the normal post victory grim congratulations. A bottle of scotch was passed about, each commander giving a toast to the men and then the general before taking a drink. The commander passed on the scotch, choosing instead his canteen, then spoke. This was a risky move. The men were bait, and we had to bank on no information getting back to the Hazari, that we knew of their cloakers. After a short pause, he continued, even a simple radio call would have been intercepted by the Hazari and could have changed their tactics, or worse, caused our men to panic and rout. The commander looked up at the sky, right at me. I knew that he couldn't see me, but it was unnerving. But, uh, someone up there was looking out for us today. Humanity doesn't need me to play God. They never have. And I won't start now. End of chapter. Story number two. Invitation written by Aldrich Spawn. In the earliest days of the 22nd century, mankind finally emerged victorious amongst the stars. The final key had been understanding the quantum theory which had led them to the creation of the non-locality engine, a device that allowed near instantaneous travel to any spot in space. We left the Earth with high hopes and only two real goals. The first was simple. We wanted to expand and explore the final frontier. The second was simultaneously just as simple and yet vastly more complex. We sought contact with others. We had long believed that we were not alone, that somewhere out amongst the void there had to be another race, possibly many, who were waiting for our arrival. Whether as an enemy or as an equal, we did not know. But either way, we as a species had dreamt of the first meeting for centuries. We were disappointed. The emptiness of space lived up to its title. Except for us, no other ship traveled the cosmos. Except for us, no other race spread into the sky. There was no great enemy, no steadfast ally, no great empire or confederacy spanning the galaxy. We found no sign of the little green or gray men which we had long believed to have been watching our people and visiting our world and whom we thought would be there to greet humanity as we stepped into the wider universe. It was just us. In our sorrow, we continued to search, and eventually we found race after race, each more interesting than the last, and not one of them had left the surface of their mother world. They hadn't even tried. Alone amongst those which we discovered, humanity had been the only race to not reach an understanding with their place in their native ecosystem. We and we alone had been forced to struggle and fight and rage against everything and everyone. And it had made us strong. If necessity was the mother of invention, then adversity was the mother of progress. Our suffering made us seek out ever new heights from which to cast our gaze, pushing us beyond our limits and time and time again. No other species had attempted to leave the shelter of their protective motherworld's embrace, because they saw no need. They felt no desire, wanting for nothing, sought nothing greater. They were complacent in their security, pampered from cradle to grave. And as was our nature, we grew envious, and was our right. We were merciful, because mercy is a gift which only the strong may possess. We had the tools and the ability to take everything which they took for granted, everything that they held dear, and make it our own or crush it entirely. But we did not, because in the end it all came down to one simple fact. We'd been alone for so very long, and we wanted nothing more than to end our solitude. And so, in our desire for companionship, for another whom we would call our equal, we sent a message. Four sentences only. Four sentences which mankind wished to hear ourselves for countless ages. Sent out 
to a hundred thousand worlds. You are not alone. We are here. We are waiting. Come and join us. And for the first time on countless planets, beings who had never wanted for anything, never lacked for anything, looked to the stars and dared to dream of more. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment, just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.